Hi everyone, good morning. It's nice to see a nice full room, especially for open telemetry. So today's uh, session on the project uh, is to give you an update on the open telemetry project, uh, what's happening on the project, what's completed, give you kind of an overview of some of the key areas that the project has been working towards, and then open it up for the um, you know, audience to ever actually ask the maintainers and the uh, active contributors to the project um, questions. Right. So with that said, uh, I'm Alalita Sharma. I'm part of the Open Telemetry Governance Committee. I've also been involved on the project, working on metrics, uh, uh, OTLP to Prometheus, interoperability, and as well as recently been working on LLM uh, semantic conventions for um, Open Telemetry and the spec, of course. With that said, um, again, I'd like to introduce the others who are on the, uh, the, from the GC today. So, okay. Severin. Yeah, good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm Severin Neumann, based out of Germany. I work for Cisco at the Open Source Program Office there, and I'm as well part of the Governance Committee. I'm also one of the co-maintainers of the Open Telemetry documentation, so if you have any questions about that, you can send me an issue on GitHub, and I can help you there. And I give it over to Trask. Thanks. Hi, I'm Trask Stallmaker. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft and a maintainer of the Open Telemetry Java instrumentation project. Good morning. My name is Daniel Gomez Blanco. I'm a principal engineer at Sky Scanner, and I was super happy to have been elected to be part of the governance committee as an end user and trying to bridge that gap between end users and maintainers and making sure that we adopt Open Telemetry at scale. Good morning. There's some seats available up front if people want them. I'm Austin Parker, uh, Director of Open Source at Honeycomb.io. I've been a contributor uh, to OpenTelemetry since before it was OpenTelemetry. Um, I was an open tracing maintainer. Shout out to all my open tracing heads out in the audience. Tough crowd. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm also, thank you. I'm uh, from North America and I am a maintainer of the Open Telemetry demo, um, among other responsibilities in the project. All right. So, with that said, again, I'll hand it over to our first presenter, Severin, and then we'll take turns. Awesome. Okay. So, let me move this a little bit. Uh, before we talk about us, we want to talk about you. So, I'm curious who of you is a real end user of open telemetry, so using open telemetry in their production, in their operations. Oh yeah, that's really great to see. Because there's a big, an important company missing on that slide. That's your company, right? So we really want you to ask you to reach out to us and let us know like, hey, we are using open telemetry. We have a blog post maybe even about our usage of open telemetry, or maybe you did a talk about using open telemetry. We want to make the slide fuller and fuller every year. And there's another slide we want to make even fuller than that. You can use open telemetry as an end user, but you can also integrate open telemetry in your project. So once again, maybe you're contributing to any of those projects. I'm really curious who of you is working on an open source project or in a commercial product, and are you integrating open telemetry? So let me see your hands. Awesome, there's some of you. Yeah, thank you for thank integrating you open much, telemetry. And again, we want to hear about that. So we have a list of integrations also on our website nowadays. So let us know how you integrate open telemetry into your product, into your project. So you see a lot of CNCF projects here. You see a lot of Apache projects here. We are super excited about that. And we're also excited if you say like, hey, we have a commercial product and we use open telemetry because we think open telemetry should be everywhere. It is everywhere. Yeah, and one last slide from me, because I think this is always also important, talking about metrics. Uh, last month, we had the first month where we had more than 25,000 contributions to our project. So yet another milestone we broke. So yeah, thanks to everybody who contributed. And with that, I give it over back to Alulita. 
right. So I think that um, what we're going to do is cover different areas of you know, work that's ongoing in the project. And this is about logging. As most of you know, logging has been stable. It was declared uh, when, when Open Telemetry went GA in uh, November at uh, the previous KubeCon we had in Chicago. Uh, again, logging SDKs were already starting to get uh, stable. So C++.net uh, went first, and then Java and PHP now are also done. So we'll continue, you know, again, works continuing on the other languages also. But that's work in progress. This is stable. Experimental logging SDKs, as you can see, is Go. Go is in progress, JS, JavaScript, Python, Rust, and uh, Erlang. Uh, there's also experimental logging bridges for C++, because again, many of these languages have inherent logging support, which then OpenTelemetry also leverages. Uh, Java with Log4j and Logback. JavaScript with Bunyan and Winston. .NET with iLogger, PHP with Monolog, Python, and uh, Rust with Tokyo Tracing, right? So um, again, wherever there is native or you know, uh, standardized logging available, that's also been leveraged in there. The spec is also stable at this point, so that's another call out. But uh, keep this, you know, keep, please stay involved. If there's a language that is not, you don't see on this list yet, uh, please ask, please ask one of us. Uh, with that, again, I'll switch over to Trask. Um, and Trask, please tell us more about semantic conventions. Thank you, Alameda. Um, so uh, now that uh, logs, traces, metrics have been declared stable, um, one of the next big frontiers is semantic conventions, which is defining the shape of the telemetry within those signals. Um, the having semantic conventions for HTTP databases and many others is critical. Otherwise, uh, because of the number of uh, libraries, languages, platforms, if everyone was emitting telemetry and calling URL.path something different, um, then on your back end, you're looking at your telemetry, you're going to have a hard time stitching things together, correlating data. Um, and so uh, a lot of work is going into semantic convention def definitions and uh, finally moving semantic conventions to stability. Um, we did declare HTTP semantic convention stable in November, which was a big milestone for us. Our first semantic conventions that we declared stable. A lot of work went into just even what the definition of stable is for semantic conventions. Um, but this will pave the way for having stable telemetry that you can rely on, that you can uh, alert on, that won't change underneath you uh, going forwards. Um, the current efforts are um, uh, underway uh, across a lot of different semantic conventions. There's specifically SIGs that are focused on database semantic conventions, messaging, um, system, and uh, most recently, uh, LLM semantic convention SIG has started up. Um, and I will, I know that's a topic that interests, uh, if that is a topic that interests you, I will point you to Alalita. Uh, uh, she is helping to drive that group. Um, and uh, uh, we did recently, we are trying to get to stability on database semantic conventions. We recently extended that effort by another six weeks uh, and uh, Probably will take a little bit longer, but uh, we think that's really valuable work. Um, and uh, semantic conventions are a great way to get involved. Um, if there's semantic conventions that are important to you and your, uh, uh, what you are doing, um, we have a weekly SIG, we have a repo, we invite people to join and contribute. Hello, 
So um, now that we've, uh, we've got current like, stable signals for metrics, traces, and logs, we've been focusing on how we understand the applications that we deploy in complex distributed systems and how we, the experience that we provide with those applications. But now um, it's time to extend the remit of OpenTelemetry and to start to correlate those signals back to uh, the, the, the uh, user experience. So start to work on the client-side instrumentation. There's a bunch of work that was done in that, in that front. And also now linking it down to profiling as well. So we're able to get uh, code level insights that are linked to the traces, the metrics, and the logs that our applications produce. So um, the uh, big announcement from profiling is that the data model um, spec was finally merged and profiling implementations are ready for takeoff. And this is not just me talking about from Sky's kind of being a travel agent, but a uh, travel uh, uh, company. Uh, but it's, uh, it's going to provide an easy way for us to, to use uh, profiling, a universal model to all languages. So the profiling um, profiles are uh, represented equally in all languages. And of course, being part of open telemetry, being vendor neutral. But most importantly is the correlation with other signals from trace context with trace ID and span ID correlating back to profiles. Um, and that basically allows the metrics and logs as well to be correlated, but also from those to individual profiles as well. And of course, as part of the, uh, the uh, resource correlation, because we, we, all that telemetry emanates from a single resource, we can then as well understand the relationships between these signals. And we're really glad to, to report as well that we have two donation proposals currently in progress, and that will kickstart the, the implementations for, for profiling. So well, that one is from Elastic and EBP, on the eBPF-based uh, um, profiling agent and Splunk with NetBase uh, profiler. But these new signals as well, and this new tooling comes with new challenges. Um, on the client side, for example, there has been a lot of work to stabilize the events API to, for example, talk about concepts that we hadn't considered before, like how do we represent user sessions? How, that is, that, how is that tied to resource attributes, for example? And how do we propagate context from the client side all the way to the back end and back again to the, to the client sometimes? And uh, uh, last but not least, as the, we are finding that concepts like resource attributes that, um, that are now basically we're finding challenges and how that correlates to how we can support use cases for client side, for example, when we're thinking about um, how a resource changes over time and what are the identifying attributes in that resource. So there's a new SIG that has just been formed to uh, define the concept of, uh, of an entity as a, as a producer of telemetry and better represent the changes of, of entities over time. And with this, I'll hand over to Austin. All right. <clears throat> All right. So one, one last thing is that if you follow the TOC uh, repo, we have a formally applied for graduation as a project. What does this mean to you as an end user, as a contributor? Um, let's look back. You know, we originally applied to move into sandbox stage in 2019. We were, went into incubation in 2021. So, you know, we're right along the glide path to using our travel pun to, you know, continue to grow and mature the project. We believe that we've achieved a lot of a lot in five years, right? Not just stability, not just, you know, our core mission of unifying tracing, logging and metrics in one nice um, package but also around our governance processes, our tooling, our APIs, and our configuration. You know, we're rolling out, we have a new security SIG that's putting together standards and software bill and material principles and applying those across the org. We're nearing uh, version one of the collector, which is, you know, an incredibly important core component. And as you yourself can attest, open telemetry is used in production worldwide at hundreds and probably even thousands of organizations. So thank you. <clears throat> Graduation is a strong signal to the rest of the world that this project is here for the long haul, it's stable, and will be something they can rely on for many years into the future. We've formally applied um, this month, so starting next month, we'll be kicking off third-party security audits um, in conjunction with the CNCF to audit our kind of core repositories. Um, over the summer, those audits will continue along with best practices audits. 
and remediation this fall, that should complete, and we will publish the results of all these audits and fixes, and then it, um, they'll vote, and then we're gonna have a really cool party in Salt Lake City, probably. And result, better open telemetry for everyone within the sound of my voice. So thank you all so much for your support. We would not be here without um, all of you as contributors and users. So uh, before we move into questions, I want to you know, talk about if for some reason you're here and you, you're wondering what this open telemetry thing is all about. Um, best way to learn is to go to our website, opentelemetry.io, check us out on GitHub, our t organization is open-telemetry. You can find us on uh, YouTube. We have a demo that you can download and install. Um, we have a end user working group who runs a lot of feedback sessions and other things. And we have a booth, the Open Telemetry Observatory. Um, it's not part of the project pavilion. It's kind of set off to the side. If you go into the expo floor and go to the left, you will see it. Um, but we're going to be there all day and all week um, with various feedback sessions and ways to meet the maintainers and ask questions and get help. So I hope to see you all there. With that said, um, let's move on to some Q&A. If you would like to ask a question, we have a microphone right here. So uh, please stand up, get in the line. If you're a, a maintainer and you want to uh, come up to the stage to answer questions, we would love to have you. So yeah. Jurassi. If Jurassi's here. Anthony. Any other GC members here? I think Anthony is here. Yeah, y'all can come up. Um, but let's go ahead and get to the questions. Uh, so hello, um, I have a simple question. We are here at KubeCon, and from my understanding, you cannot get uh, full Kubernetes observability with the core open telemetry binary, and you need the open the hotel contrib version. Can you tell us more about that? And regarding also the graduation process, uh, the Kubernetes observability is it part of the GA or is it? as part of the contrib outside of the perimeter. Anyone wanna? I guess that's mine. Sure. <laughs> um, so the Kubernetes components, they're not part of the core, they're only part of contrib. Contrib is not in scope for graduation, so it's not gonna go into the security audit, but we see those components as essential for use cases like that, right? So um, we are, um, if, um, we have a proposal for the collector, in um, expanding the number of distributions that we have, right? So we have to first come up with rules, and with those rules, then we can start making other distributions. So it's likely that we're gonna have a distribution for Kubernetes observability or for getting telemetry data from Kubernetes. Um, but each individual component from the collector can also be consumed on your own distribution. So you can build your own distribution with the, the only the components that you need that you want so uh, each one of those they have also stability markers so we can say that the kubernetes events receiver is stable or it's alpha or it's beta uh, and you can then consume that in downstream distributions thank you um also i forgot to mention tc members please come on up if you want to be a part of the hotel party hi um, I have a question actually about multi-tenancy, um, general multi-tenancy support. So this is something which we've kind of run into as a need, let's say, as we've started to adopt um, the collector more widely. Um, just an example, um, we use Thanos, okay? So tenancy is um, communicated via headers. And at the moment, there's kind of a disconnect between the header setter, which requires a context or metadata information, and information which we can get from the pipeline. So I guess, the question is, is there a SIG for multi-tenancy? Should there be? Um, and if not, can we kind of, um, let's say, focus on multi-tenancy support? Or, if, you know, what would be the, what would be your, that's, that's the, that's the GC, what would your view be on the future support for multi-tenancy and what we can do then? Who wants it? Ted? Yeah, so uh, I would divide that into two pieces. One is what technical changes might you need to the collector just to support headers or other things you need to do what you're doing right now. 
the second thing would be, like, separate from that, uh, some kind of multi official multi-tenancy support from open telemetry, the open telemetry way to do multi-tenancy. My only concern with that second approach is multi-tenancy is already a thing people do. And I would worry a bit about us saying, here is the, the square hole for you guys to bang all your different pegs through. Uh, I think there would need to be some research done first about how realistic some universal approach to multi-tenancy would be. But I'm certain to say in the meantime, go ahead and like join the collector sig. And especially if you're willing, you know, to do some, you know, uh, dev work on the front. I don't think the, the collectors would be opposed to uh, better header support being uh, yep. in the pipeline. We actually have an experiment um, that we are trying to have an end-to-end for that specific case. So Tunnels works the same way as Loki, and I had Loki in mind when, when designing uh, that thing. Um, but we're still... So <laughs> I guess the problem is uh, we have a mismatch between what comes in, which is a request context, like individual requests can have uh, different headers, and the data that goes out, which they may be batched, uh, and the, the original request context is lost when we're batching, right? So we need ways to do batching based on context. I think we have that part in, in, in place already, but we still need to run a end-to-end -end test to see if we can propagate properly uh, the header that we received to the outgoing HTTP call uh, with the proper header. Uh, I think we are missing one or two parts to that, so that solution is close to completion, but perhaps not quite there. So if you are, if you have uh, specific issues, open uh, issues on, on, on for the collector and we can take a look. But on the second point, I think it's more even more complicated because multi-tenancy is di done differently by different companies, by different orgs. Uh, I would encourage you to start at least a working group, perhaps, to uh, d design uh, or to document uh, how it can be uh, accomplished, how it can be done, so that other people, when looking at multi-tenancy, can follow your steps. Thank you. All right, next. And again, if you have questions, please come get in line. Oh, um, I have a couple of questions. The first one was to the gentleman who spoke before Austin. As me, too. Um, I wasn't paying attention. Um, so you had a slide just before the um, the graduation slide, and you said, um, I don't think so. next one. I think it was uh, next one. I don't know. Let's. Uh, <laughs> you, were talk, you were talking about there would be um, new signals, and you said there would be new propagation headers. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's something that's been uh, was, was currently in progress. But if you're like one of the challenges of client size. Um, um, well, propagating context from client side is that when you're opening a, a page, there is no SDK being initialized, right? So you need to be able to propagate that that context back from the from the server side to the client side, so you can link your initial navigation from the browser to the to the um, to the actual trays that loaded your that got the page load, right? So that's uh, something that's currently being discussed, and uh, I think Jurassic is involved in this as well. Um, so he's probably going to know more about that than me. Um, but yes, how do we link that? For example, options being like server time and head response headers, and, and you know ways that you can actually link the trays that you start to on the back end to the initial navigation from your browser. Okay, so this is, is an extension to the W3C header. Uh, this is um, there is a new version to W3C trace context, uh, the V3, um, and the V3 adds trace response uh, to the W3C. Um, so we have trace parent, and we now are going to have a trace response. Trace response would then be propagated back uh, to the to the caller. Um, but the problem that we are having right now is, if we establish a new header, browsers are going to block that by default because those the headers that are propagated back to the client or what clients can read, uh, it's whitelisted, right? So it's uh, it's a selection list, and um, there there are headers that we can make use of. Um, like the server timing header, uh, which is the one that we are proposing to use instead of a new header, so so that we can piggyback on that. Okay, thank you. Um, so the other one, so I have, I'm one of those 20,000 people who have made a contribution, so I understand the... Um, <laughs> I, I understand the request, the response could be PRs are welcome. 
But um, so now all the specs are mature. We have the implementations. So, so I'm probably looking more at the um, collector contrib here, I think. But um, the the um, plugins for tracing are, pr are pretty mature, yeah? Like the ones that have been done first. And now we're supporting metrics, for example. Some of those plugins are less mature or just metrics aren't supported at all um, in, certain, in certain plugins. Is there a broad roadmap of like, are we just keeping doing new plugins or stopping to like make sure metrics are first class citizens? Um, specifically for the collector or? Um, are, you, are you talking about like instrumentation packages? So like collector, so my, my exact example, it's not really important what it was, but um, it was um, an exporter and there was a feature where you could, um, if, you, if you're exporting, if the capital exporter and you can um, petition metrics according to their um, trace ID. So that's fine, and it's not supported in for it's not supported for logs, for example. So that it, you know the fact it is Kafka is not important, but I can do the same with tracing. I can build a pipeline for tracing that won't work at the moment with logs and metrics. So it sounds like the load balancing exporter. Yes. Yeah, um, and the load balancing exporter was made for for traces first, right? So that's the problem we were trying to solve, or tail sampling and so on. Um, then people came out and said, oh, yeah, so we have this service map, uh, service expansion, <laughs> expand metrics processor, and we need to do the same kind of routing based on the service name and so on. Um, I think it is supported for logs, um, but perhaps just not, just for trace ages, uh, perhaps, uh, and also for attributes, I don't know. But um, I guess to the basic of the question, or to reduce the question to, the, to this um, main uh, point, um, we have a view one collector view one um, group working on on establishing what we need to do to uh, achieve uh, GA for collector. What what does it look like to be GA for the collector? We are having discussions, and we I think I think we have a plan right now, and we're following that plan. And we are once we have view one, then let's let, let's make it stable for other components as well, right? But. Um, at the very beginning, we need to, to make the core of the collector plus a few components like the hotel the receiver and exporter, we need to make them stable. Um, but if you have concerns about specific components, open issues, and we can... Yeah, it's just generic. Like yeah. yeah. For the collector in, in general, that's the idea. So we, we have a plan for a few components and we want to get good observability for them. We want to get good documentation for them because those are things that are missing for some components. Uh, and then finally call the collector view one so that we can move on and you know start doing the same things for other things for other components um, and have people have a, a view of what is required to be stable yeah, thank you. yeah. Uh, i do uh, just to add on you had a a general point about contrib that uh, i want to point out which is open telemetry is not staffed sufficiently to maintain contrib across the board. We are staffed to uh, build the spec and the semantic conventions and define kind of how everything should work across different languages and across different instrumentation packages. And we try our best to maintain uh, a priority queue of what we think are, you know, the most widely used packages. But this is like an actual people power issue that the project currently has. Like, it's not realistic for the core maintainers, like the SDK maintainers in each language to also maintain all of the instrumentation and packages. It's not realistic for us to be experts in every single uh, library or framework or workflow that people need. So this is an area where open telemetry really needs active contributors. So if uh, you make use of any particular packages in Contrib, consider stepping up to becoming a maintainer of that package. Uh, we're happy to have you. Thank you. Um, can I ask, since we have five minutes left, just uh, one question each. Thank you. I will try and be brief. Um, you may have actually just addressed it with your point about Contrib. I was, I'm relatively new to Hotel, quite excited about the things that can sort of help enable us do more stuff and do more decoupling stuff. Um, I was excited to read about the client side of telemetry and in my mind that's really around um, like service libraries and things that services might want to ship to other people. Has there been any effort to 
reach out to some of the projects like OpenAPI, here is the Swagger, to see if we can get some of that integrated within their library generation. Because I think a lot of these libraries for a lot of organizations, especially bigger ones, tend to be auto-generated. So if we can yeah. auto-generate libraries that come with OTEL batteries included out of the box, that feels like it might be useful to do. I appreciate it's probably a prime contract thing, but I wasn't sure if anybody had thought about that or was aware of that. Bro broadly, yes. Yeah. We've, we've had those conversations. Right. And so, so I think I can respond to, there's two parts. One, uh, have we reached out to all these organizations? No. Um, but uh, you mentioned uh, instrumentation being embedded. This is actually something we're very, very, very interested in. We've um, held off on, on pushing this concept because we wanted to make sure enough semantic conventions and other things were stable before we asked people to natively instrument. But open telemetry has been designed from the start to allow instrumentation to be embedded directly into libraries. Long term, we see this as not just a solution to the contrib problem, but um, a paradigm shift we would like to see in the industry. Currently, people uh, in general are very good about testing, right, and writing tests when they're developing software. We would like to see that extended to observability, thinking about uh, the runtime characteristics of your library and using uh, the open telemetry APIs as a way to um, directly represent that and have a conversation uh, if you're a library maintainer with, with your end users uh, about runtime characteristics. So we think that's very important. You probably hear us squawking about that a lot more uh, in the future once more of the semantic conventions become stable. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe one or two more. So. Hey, uh, so regarding the browser with user monitoring, how is the timeline looking for like beta and stable? Is it this year or next year? And any official what uh, functionality will be included in? Let, let's say late. Let's say Q4, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, we are. We do have a, a client run SIG. Uh, it's been quite a backlog of work because uh, clients are, are very event based. Um, they do have traces, right? Like when you're communicating with the server, and that's very important, but a lot of what you're doing is getting events spit out by the various like frameworks and runtimes. So we first had to do some work to understand how we were going to represent events with an open telemetry. That work is finally done. Uh, so you will see uh, the client groups starting to spit out a lot more semantic conventions around the browser and having a browser specific uh, SDK uh, come out soon, as well as hopefully I, iOS, iOS, yeah. Apple representative. Yeah, like I said, pro probably like later this year to get something yeah. in people's hands. It's also the one that I mentioned to represent entities as like producers of telemetry. This is a bit different on the client side, where like if you've got a resource attribute, for example, that may change over time, like you change from Wi-Fi to 5G, and that is you know something that you need to change to keep a, a history of that as well. So, um, yeah, there's some work that needs to happen uh, as a pre-requirement for, for things to get stable, right, on the client side. Yep. And one thing that I have mentioned before, and applies here as well, if you're an expert, an industry expert in the, in the topic, join the six. All right. We, we are need people to help us. We're being gonged off, so um, if you have any further questions, please look for us at the Open Media Observatory. Thank you all for coming, and have a great KubeCon. <laughs> We're